Now, uh, neuroblastoma. If I ask you an MCQ, most common malignant neoplasm in the infants less than one year of age without any perturbation, you should answer in the exam firmly that it is neuroblastoma is what you need to remember. From where does it come from? It is the neural crest from which it will be arising. Very commonly from the adrenal medulla, it will be arising. And anywhere along the sympathetic chain, including the neck, the neuroblastoma can arise. How does it clinically present? Abdominal mass and fever are considered with the presenting features. And uh, in fact, in few scenarios, prenatal, Antenatal ultrasound only, it may be detectable. In few situations, is what need to be understood. So, neuroblastoma less than one year of the age is very important to be remembered. This is a very typical ultrasound which shows the left upper quadrant of the abdomen, which is showing a heterogeneous left adrenal mass, classical of neuroblastoma. This is a contrast enhanced abdominal CT showing a left adrenal mass lesion. Once more, which is a neuroblastoma. If you section a neuroblastoma, typically the adrenal gland, it looks like a uh, adenocortical tissue with a thin yellow rim, classical of neuroblastoma. Then what kind of histopathology do you expect? Round neuroblasts with a fibrillary background, this is all like amyloid, uh, you have no fibrillary substance that is in the background with the round cells, round neuroblasts are typically present. So, the ganglion cells, as the neuroblastoma matures, even ganglion cells also will appear. So, ganglion cells mixed with lymphocytes is what you typically come across in case of neuroblastoma. Ultimately, neuroblastoma can metastasize to the liver, to the skin and to the bone marrow. Whenever it metastasizes, it produces what are called the blueberry mufflin lesions. Classical of neuroblastoma is what you need to remember. Then what are the two common substances which you will do an assay in the urine in order to make a diagnosis of the neuroblastoma? Vinyl mandelic acid and homovanilic acid are the ones which need to be remembered. Then, how does it clinically present? The mother will be giving bath to the baby and she observes that there is an abdominal mass which is crossing the midline. It is a classical presentation in case of the neuroblastoma. And if at all it is causing the compression of the spinal cord, then uh, the lower extremity weakness can be there and what you can see, a high thoracic mass also can be a presenting feature. So, proptosis, bone lesions, periorbital ecchymosis, they are all the classical features of the neuroblastoma. So, these are the periorbital ecchymosis, very classical lesion of uh, the neuroblastoma. So, what are the two classical things you need to remember? when it comes to histology of the neuroblastoma, small round blue cells, which you have seen in the earlier slide. Then if you do immunostaining, chromogranin positivity is one of the very, very, very classical neuroendocrine marker of the neuroblastoma. And uh, if you treat them, these tumors will undergo maturity so that there will be ganglion cells and mature neural tissue is what you classically come across. Now this is stage 4 neuroblastoma. As I told you that neuroblastoma can metastasize to the skin, to the bone, etc, etc. Now comes obviously what are the important genetic aberrations in neuroblastoma. Less than one year neuroblastoma occur, no? remember 1p. Deletion of 1P is what you need to remember. Then N-mic 
gene amplification is what you will see. Hyperdiploidy is another important genetic aberration. If a doll in neuroblastoma has a N mic amplification, then it will show a very, very aggressive behavior. But we are more happy if it shows hyperdiploidy because it is associated with better prognosis. These are all the important issues for the examiner. You should not uh, faint seeing them in the questions. Is it hyperdiploidy, good or bad? No thinking in exam. Reflexly, you should answer as such. You are a seasoned uh, pediatric uh, oncosurgeon. So, like that, you should be in a position authoritatively to answer in the tomorrow's exam, doctor. Now, let us take up the next important.